And now, here's Wilbur. Oh, hey! I'm Wilbur J. Morat Jr., and we're so excited that you're with us today. Today, we're going to talk about costumes. Hey, Morats! Show your skins. In our colony, we have all different skin tones, just like you at home. So we're excited that you'll be with us today to talk about costumes. Oh, yeah! But we also get to wear clothes. Over to you. Hi there. I am Spencer Henderson. I am the costume shop director for the Alliance Theater. And joining me today... I'm Nicole Clockle. I am the costume shop design assistant. We are going to be talking today about Naked Mole Rat, and we're going to be talking about the process that we as a costume shop went through to create the look that ended up on stage. And Nicole, why don't you tell them what you did on the show? So as a design assistant at the Alliance, what I do is I get everything in order that the costume designers need in order to bring the whole show to life. So for this one, our amazing costume designer was Fabian Aguilar. He lives in New York. Uh, so we already work remotely a lot before all of this. And he sends renderings, research, all sorts of things so that we can give it to our awesome costume shop team. And then we make all the costumes. Cool. All right, so we put together uh, a quick presentation just to show you guys so you can actually see some photos. Um, so today what we're going to talk about is taking things from basically the two-dimensional drawing that Fabian gave us, like you see there on your left, to a finished product on our stage like you see on the right. All right, so um, uh, Nicole, why don't you talk about this stuff? So this is one of the first stages in the design process where uh, Fabian gets together all of his research for what inspires him, what naked mole rats actually look like, which are a little weird. So how do we take something like that and make it fun, uh, comfy, look cool for the kids, all of that. So here's some of the slouchy stuff. And then this is the drawing of how he translates from those pictures to what he wants to see on stage and what we're gonna make. And so he sent us, uh, there were probably how many, like 15, 20 of these renderings for the show? At least a dozen. And, um, and we take those and use those to inform our process uh, of trying to take this two-dimensional thing that he sent us and turn it into something on our stage. Uh, so Nicole, you wanna talk a little bit about fabric? Yes, here's the really cool part about this. So when you saw those jumpsuits and everything from his research page, they're pretty much uh, just flat colors and we don't want it to just look like a flat tan piece of fabric. So what we can make even more fun is if we mix two different fabrics together and also match the music of the show. Because if you haven't seen it yet, which you can, it is uh, online at the Alliance Theater website for streaming. Uh, it has a lot of rock and roll music. So to make it more fun and flashy, he mixed a metallic purplish pink spandex underneath their skin tone of mesh. And we wanted to show a lot of diversity on stage, so we um, tried to match all the different skin tones to just see a variety of different mole rats on stage. And this is a photo that we already had of Lowry because you may have seen him on stage before in A Christmas Carol. Uh, he's on stage a lot here, he's on TV, he's on films, he's all over the place. So here's a photo we had of him, and we sent Fabian pictures of the actors so he knows what they look like ahead of time, and then how he wants to make those mole rat body shapes on each of them. So you can see where he drew all the shapes for where the bellies go and where the legs go. And then we pass those on to our drapers in the shop, and they know how to build it. So um, we had two drapers. We had two drapers at the Alliance Theater, and both of them took on different aspects of naked mole rats. So Cindy Lou Who, uh, one of our drapers, was responsible for building all of the padded bodies. Um, so she went through several different kinds of foam, trying to see what kind of foam built the best uh, padding, moved the best on the body. And then again, you can see in these photos. So the first thing that we did was build it, put it on an, on a dress form and send it to Fabian. And again, he sent us his commentary, uh, you know, things he wanted to change, things he wanted to smooth out, et cetera, um, this early in the process so that we, again, go back and make another version and make another version to see um, what we think. 
we started a lot earlier on this one than we normally do for other shows just because there was so much to build and it was so specific to each individual actor so that's why there was all the back and forth drawing this sending that back and forth lots of photos to go and we did our first fitting like back in december right yeah and the show before new year's in like february and for us that's a pretty long lead time we don't usually quite get that much lead time um so yeah so these so cindy lou did the padding and then julie kennedy is our other draper uh, and she took on all the skin layers uh so you can see here she tried two different things with the sleeves so like on the one on the left has um we get the raglan sleeve which means it doesn't set into an armhole and then the one on the right uh, is an actual normal set-in sleeve like you see on a normal shirt. And it was just to kind of see the way the different ones work, and it gave us different ways to control the swagging of the fabrics that you see. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that was the skin layer. And then our craftsperson, Diana Thomas, did the tails for us. Um, and she had done these tales before for another show or for other shows. And we were using them as examples to talk to Fabian about what we wanted. So some of them were twisty turny, some of them were shorter, some were longer. And we asked, which one do you like the best? And of course he said, why doesn't everyone have their own individual tail shapes since they all look different? And so they did. Okay. So, uh, one of our stitchers in the shop, Brett Parker, um, did this video for us, uh, putting on the, the mock-up that we made and sending it to our designer, which gave him a chance to actually see it move. Since he wasn't here in Atlanta, he couldn't come look at this stuff in person. So this gave us a chance to send him something so he could watch this person actually move in the padding. What a sport, being our guinea pig. He sure was. Guinea mole rat. So then came fittings. Um, like we said, Lowry Brown, who was already in our Christmas Carol, so he was already in our building doing a show uh, in December, uh, was our, our guinea pig for the actors. We, since we knew he was cast in the show and we knew we had to make one for him, we figured we'll start with him. Uh, and it gave us a chance to kind of R&D with him. And we probably did like four fittings with him over the course of- I think so. Yeah. Uh, he was a real sport. And it was great, so he uh, saved the day on this one. Um, all right, so first fitting. You wanna talk a little bit about this one, Nicole? Yeah, and can I just say, you can already tell by looking at the pictures in the video that as soon as an actor comes in for their fitting and they put on the costume, they just immediately get into character and they have so much fun. He was doing his grandpa voice at the first fitting. So here we go with the first fitting. It's the first time that everyone's seeing us all together. How does it fit him? How can he move around in it? So that's why we had a video, you know, the same way that Brett was doing in the last one to make sure, can I dance in it? Can I do all sorts of movement and choreography that I might need to do on stage in the real suit? So that's the first layer. Which and that's the and because, it was, because it was a musical, we knew it was going to be physical. They had to be able to move and dance and jump and whatever else they needed to do. It was also going to be hot if they're doing all that, so they were really smart, uh, the drapers, and they installed these ice packs and little pockets on their shirts so that when they're in all of these layers and it gets really, really hot, that they don't get uh, overwhelmed. And here's the next layer with the saggy skin on top. Here we learned two things. The first one, you can see on the left picture where we took a big tuck on the side that, that we had made them a little too long for the way that they fit the bodies. So we learned that quick. The other thing we learned was how little of the padding shape that you see. And so it kind of guided us as we started going through the process, like that every change in the pad did not necessarily equal a change in what you see on stage. And in this video, that little mark you see on the safety pin, oh, it's on this one too. That safety pin that you see marked in the photo, that is for his belly button, which in the show tells us is very important. It's true. Um, all right, so then this, this photo is, was actually taken several fittings later. Um, 
this is one of the last photos that we took. We were still tweaking there at the knees. You can kind of see on the sideways picture, there's still a lot of extra swagging at the knees. But his character, Grandpa, was supposed to be the oldest mole rat. So he had more swagging, more um, wrinkles than necessarily other ones. We kind of varied the amount of wrinkle that the different mole rats had. Yeah, each of the mole rats had their own sort of character shape. So his is this longer, slimmer, droopier shape than everyone because he is so much older. You can see here, we're still a little bit in process. Like the tail hasn't been completely covered. It's still green foam. Um, there's still like things that had to be tweaked and done even at this latest stage. I told you there would be more layers. Here we go. Clothes on top of clothes on top of clothes. So, so this is the, first the clothing fitting. Yes, first clothing fitting. Because of how low the crotches on the, these are and where the padding sits like almost at the knees, we had to make all the pants that anybody wore, except for one, uh, in the show, we had to make. So here we are fitting a mock-up of the pants. So this isn't the real fabric. This is just uh, something we had in stock that we could make it out of so we can kind of see how it behaves. Do we want it bigger or smaller or longer or shorter or whatever else we want to know. And then our final fitting. And these are the real clothes in the real fabrics. Pants custom made for a mole rat with a really big belly and short legs that human pants would never fit. And a tail hole. Yes, when you're a mole rat, you need, uh, you need an opening in the front and then in the back for your tail. So it's, it takes twice as long to put on your pants. Luckily, we've got an awesome wardrobe group to get him dressed real fast. Indeed. Um, and then after our final fitting in the clothes, we went on stage. And here you can kind of see these are all pictures of Lowry uh, on stage in his actual mole rat costume. And the thing I love about the picture on the far right is you can actually see how the shiny uh, spandex underneath kind of shines through the skin layer. So you do get a good sense of kind of what that looks like. Yeah, he's got this nice sparkly peachy color. And you can also see in the production photos the awesome wigs that Lindsay Ewing made for us. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, so that was kind of our process. Uh, anything else, Nicole, that you want to share about it? It was just such a blast. Working with Fabian always is. He has such an imagination for all these kids shows that he's done with us. Um, it was it was a lot of fun to work on. So please go to our website and check out Naked Mole Rat if you still can live stream it. And thank you all for joining us. Bye. Bye.